Hello everyone, this is Denise Love. I want to welcome you back to my channel. I'm going to continue playing in this media journal because I am determined to make a big abstract book or something just big that I can flip through and appreciate that I did all this work in here. Here's that last layout that we did and I think on this page right here because it's flanked by a piece of this burlap I'm going to do a big abstract piece on here and then I'm going to leave this burlap for something for later but it kind of allows me to do like one big page without getting super worried about it being a double layout and sometimes sometimes that's what we need. And what I want to do I've been playing in my mashes watercolors trying to figure out like what my favorites are and just seeing what these colors do and this granite right here um, color that she has really is appealing to me today I love the things that separate out and the very darkness of the color and so what I want to do is just a very large kind of organic abstract on here and I might do some mark making and I might do like some initial maybe marks out here I'm trying to see how I can get this to lay fairly flat and not open back up on me we'll just see I've got some little bulldog clips just in case see it's kind of lifting because it's painted on the other side that's what I'm trying to kind of stop a little bit but I don't want it to get in, in the way of my painting stuff but I think what I'm gonna do is with my Lyra 6B water soluble it is water soluble so it might blend in with our piece but it's really bold and I think I'm, I'm just gonna get rid of my kind of blank page paralysis here by making some marks and sometimes that's a really good way to get started because you know you look at something and then you're like oh I'm afraid to get started I don't want to ruin this okay so I think this is the granite and that's the color I'm gonna activate it a little bit because I really want to get some super strong color out of here I think I'm gonna play again with my rosemary and company number two mop brush because um, I just want to go big I'm going to come back and make more marks and I want I want to just do something big and organic and I want it to have some light and some dark and we just we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it Whoa! look at this color it's really lovely almost Payne's gray so I'm gonna move some of this around you know this is that cotton kind of cotty um, paper and this paper's weird. I, I, I know it's not my favorite because I have some of this paper um, in single sheets. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's more fabric-y than regular watercolor paper. And so it soaks in the color differently. Um, it dries differently. And I don't love it. It's not my favorite watercolor paper. Let's go down here. So I am just kind of initially moving some of this around and getting it to kind of soak into that paper and at least get us started. And see, I don't want the, I want it to be able to come to the edge. So I'm, I still might need that clip because it's gonna, it's gonna move up on me. I'm kind of getting it covered with say some light, light color, but then I'm gonna come back on here and maybe lay in some hopefully really dark strains that are going to separate and granulate really interesting for us and if it doesn't well it was an interesting experiment <laughs> which this you know all these things that we do like this just really help you learn your materials and your supplies and ways that in the future maybe you can use it so don't ever get frustrated if something's not quite going the way you were thinking because we are just figuring out our supplies if nothing else we figured out oh I did not love that um, rather than oh that didn't work out 
So then you'll know going forward, you know, that was a great lesson that you learned. <laughs> That's kind of how I look at these now. And trust me, I've had my years of sitting down and stuff not working out the way I expected it. So right there with you. Took me a long time to find this inner peace of, you know, just be happy with wherever you do land with your peace um, versus getting upset that it didn't work out. And then you just kind of play and experiment. So I'm kind of thinking, I'm trying to look up here into the camera view too so I can see a little bit further back um, bird's eye view of this piece and decide do I like where it's going? Do I need a different brush to give me some different marks maybe? Like maybe I want to experiment with say a fan brush for a minute and just see like could I get some interesting um, marks or uh, lines or just something different in the piece that I don't already have. Um, so I might do some little brush making with my fan brush. <gasps> Ooh, I do love what that just did. Kind of an interesting, just visual, looks different aspect. Okay, so that was good choice. Good choice. <laughs> I like that. Now I'm also wondering, because I've got so much watercolor on here, and I kind of want it to be even darker. Like, I don't know if I can get it darker, but man, I kind of want it even darker in some of these areas. You know what I could do? This is what I could do. Even though I was experimenting with that, I'm gonna enjoy wherever it lands. What if, let me move my little, what if we come back with um, and some ink on top of this? This is, I want the, I kinda want the, uh, the indigo. This might be Payne's Gray. Yeah, that's Payne's Gray. This is indigo. I don't know, maybe I like the Payne's Gray. I'm kind of feeling this looks like Payne's Gray. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, this is the one that's got the broken dauber. Oh. So I've got some pipettes available and probably would have helped if I had shook that up. I think I'm gonna pipette some something on here just as some mark making. Ooh, that's a lot of ink. <laughs> I'm kind of feeling like though. Let's just do some some marking and just add some super yummy contrast here to our piece. And I'm, I'm using this almost as um, some like I would like the, the, the pencil, like just really not trying to get very exact. I want it to be a little more, you know, organic and less predictable. Check out that, that, oh, I love that. Um, just some super dark mark making. Oh, see, now I'm, I'm definitely loving what this is doing. And then I'm almost wondering, do I need to spread that out with a little bit of water? Do we like it? Um, because I could really get that a little bit larger. Whoa, look at that. Whoa. Okay, I didn't want that to be so, I want it to be a little more organic. I don't want it to be so, looky here, I moved it with my brush kind of look. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead with a little more of our ink in here. Oh, that's some yumminess. All right, and then to clean the pipe bed, I just kind of squish water in and out of it from my water jar, which is very dark now, but I just kind of clean these out in the water jars um, and then put that pipe up there for the next time. Um, that's dark ink though, so I might just let that water kind of sit in there in that water jar for a bit so that I can get to that later. And my little sampler sheet has a dab of ink on it, so we might go ahead and just clear that off. Then I'm kind of thinking 
We could do some other marks. I could do some dots. I might do some dark dots, but I feel like I need to let this dry some. And I could even possibly, what if, what would happen? This is more of a me wanting to know more than anything. What would happen if I sat a stencil on top of this to see if we could get some just random pattern that would maybe stick to the stencil and dry? I don't know if this will work or not. This is going to totally be an experiment. But what if we kind of sat this here and then some of these areas then maybe the ink will cling to it when we pull that back up? So I'm kind of wondering. Of course it might glue itself to my page here but <laughs> we're going to ride this idea and just see what that'll do if we set a stencil on top of our paint. And I don't normally dry these. I would definitely let them dry themselves but now that I've set the stencil on it I'm kind of curious. Oh, you know what else we could have done? Um, even with that sitting on there like that, um, we could have done something on top of the stencil. Hmm. Okay, let's just let's just think on that idea for a moment and hope I don't glue my stencil to my page. This might this just might be the decoration <laughs> of this page. I was stuck on stencil. <laughs> But it is kind of fun, you know, I mean, we pick up other things that we set on top. You know, we pick up other things that we set on top. So it is kind of fun to at least experiment. Like when we put bubble wrap on top, it peeled right off. So I'm kind of hoping the stencil peels right off too. Um, but I was kind of thinking we could, you know, do some type of paint on top of that stencil, you know, to get a pattern in there. Just kind of throwing some ideas out there. I'm not going to do it on this piece, but I'm kind of brainstorming and spitballing here with us. We could, you know, sp spritz on some type of paint. We could stencil some paint. I mean, we could do it like some other stencil where, oh, you know what we could do? We could have done powder on top, like the watercolor, the... Um, you know, the aqua bronze, shiny stuff. You could have done that. Um, but I'm, I really just want that stencil to grab that paint and see if we can get just implied, a little bit of implied design in there. It might not do nothing, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to let this dry for a moment more and I'll be right back. All right, I went and cleaned my paintbrushes and stuff. And now let's just see. <gasps> Look what it did. It actually did. It did grab the paint and it's just real slight in there that something was there. How cool is that? All right, that was pretty fantastic. Kind of feeling like I need some mark making just a little bit, not too much because that's a really beautiful piece kind of on its own and then we can decide later what we might want to do on this side. Could do another stenciled piece on this side like we did um, further back. That might be um, something that we think about because that was pretty stenciled on here and I still don't know how I'm going to finish that if it's done or if I'm going to cut it down but that could be an idea over here um, another element pulling from this but I mean I can even see that like right here in the lightest part that's super cool so I think I'm going to do a little mark making feel like maybe maybe some black um, dots and just a little whimsy in here. Nothing that'll really take away too far from the kind of urban-y, grungy, abstract feel I was going with, but just maybe some extra elements because why not? Just for giggles. <laughs> and then if it didn't work out, it's no big deal. It's in our little art journal. And later, you know, a lot of times I look at some elements after I've done them and I think, ugh. And then later I'll look at it and I'll be like, oh, I really actually did like that. So it's all subjective to whatever day we did these on, too, as to what I end up loving or not. See, that's kind of fun. Just a little spreading that element out a little bit. I like that. Okay, so this was a fun exercise for minimalism. 
one color kind of uh, layout, which I like doing those sometimes. This is a um, this is my art graph 6B. It's got some paint on the tip. Kind of thinking, let me get my little pencil sharpener out. I'm kind of thinking maybe some graphite marks. This is a good exercise in one tonal overall piece. I love that. Sometimes it's not about all the colors that you have. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is about color and um, it's about um, lightness and darkness and texture and just some of the other elements. And I can see this uh, watercolor as it granulates out and dries. There's different shades in it. So even though I used one watercolor to do all these, um, there are some really lovely colors separating out of that piece that I'm just like, oh, totally was amazing. Like, I already like Payne's gray and indigo anyway, so having these colors separate into something more interesting is super cool. Oh, yeah, I like that. This kind of pulls along the same thing that that fan brush does, so that's cool. I like adding more of an element that I thought was interesting, but maybe in a different material. So that's kind of what I'm thinking with this. And I don't want it to be like so distracting that it's like suck you're in your face. But I do like a little interesting elements as we're looking around our piece. So these are these are fun. Ooh, I love these. <laughs> okay, so I'm almost feeling like I'm there for today on this piece. Um, I could keep kind of coming in and adding a few marks and textures and stuff, but I actually like where this piece landed. I really love some of the individual elements and the colors. I'm gonna Try to come closer where you can maybe see some of this color that's separated out in here. It's really beautiful. Um, and then I like that our dark, dark piece is like moving our eye around the piece. So that was pretty fun to experiment with. And I think for today, this is going to be the page in this book. And I love that as you flip through, it's kind of flanking these other large abstracts. It's different, but it's interesting and kind of fits in my theme of this book, I think, which is going to be big abstracts. <laughs> and I think I'm going to call this one... This one's done for today. I don't know if it's done forever. I might, you know, decide and come back and, you know, I could add other stuff later, like collage elements or what have you, but I don't feel like that's the direction this book is going. So I'm feeling good about where this one's sitting. So I'm going to call this one done for today. Hope you enjoyed painting with me and seeing how our uh, art journal is progressing and the different ideas and layouts that we're ending up with as I'm getting to more and more of these pages. Um, there's just going to be like apparently a whole series of these <laughs> um, where I'm just adding more and more to this book because that's what's inspiring at the moment and it's really no different there's another one back here it's really no different than us working on single sheets of paper rather than a piece that's you know in here uh, in a bound in the book so we're, we're probably just going to continue for a bit working our way through this there is one more layout in here we know it's there oh yes this one way back here so we're actually making some good progress here in this book i think this is one of my favorite just because of the colors i love that deep dark indigo Payne's gray kind of coloring Hope you had fun painting with me today. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this. Subscribe if you want to see these as they continue on. And I'll see you next time.